So in this video, I want to talk about how we use interest rates in Excel. And note that it's different than a calculator, especially a financial calculator, where you can just type in the numbers, particularly with an interest rate. So let me show you how this works in Excel. So I'll just use our standard notation here with the calculator. It would look something like this. And then in Excel, it's very similar. Uh, number periods are in per instead of in. The interest rate is going to be rate instead of I slash Y. PV is going to still be the same present value price today. Uh, PMT is still the same as well. That would be like an annuity payment or a cash flow that happens every single period. Then FV also remains the same. That's the future value. So let's just walk through first an example where you're calculating the interest rate. So let's suppose you deposit for 40 years $6,500 into an account, maybe for like a Roth IRA as an example. You do this um, periodically and let's suppose that in the 40 years of time you net a nest egg of a million dollars. That's the goal, right? So if not more than that. So what would be your rate of annual rate of return given this scenario? So we would use the rate function number of periods, the payment, zero, present value, and then the future value. So note, I put minus 6,500 in the present value for this example. Um, one of the cash flows has to be an outflow or a negative number in front of it, otherwise the function will not work. I typically let price be negative, because typically in that case, I'm buying something or cash is leaving my hand. And actually using an example, I mean, actually this needs to be the annuity payment, because if I just did the 6,500, one time, that would be 13%, uh, but let's actually make that an annuity. So hang on a sec, there we go. Let's actually change this up, make that the annuity. And let me fix this. So you can see the difference between an annuity and a lump sum. Let's see. Payment should go first, then our present value. There we go. Okay, so that's the difference. If we did an annuity, the interest we're getting is by 0.98%. So if you did that with bonds, safe stocks, you could definitely hit your target. So note that's in a percentage and that's given to you. So what would happen if, let's say, I knew the percentage and I'm trying to figure out what my payment would be. So let's kind of reverse engineer this. So suppose did this for 40 periods at, let's just do 6%, um, nothing in the account. I want a million dollars. So how much would I need to deposit every year for 40 years to get this? So I'll use the payment function. The rate's gonna go first and note that I made that a percentage. Number of periods, present value, future value. So I would need to put in basically almost $6,500 to get that target. Now know what happens if I don't put 0 0.06 here or 6%, okay? Excuse me, let's do, so 0 0.06, it's doing the percentage. Let's just do a regular, I have to be careful with this. So generally speaking, if I did, whoa, general. So if I did 0 0.06 here, say that that works. If I do 6%, that also works. But now let's suppose that I just do a general number and I put in the number six. Right. That's not going to work. OK, so you can do that on calculator, but you cannot do that in Excel. So this needs to be a percentage. So let's make that a percentage. Now, not 600 percent, but 6 percent. And so we get our answers. So just make sure that there's percentage in front of that. Make sure it's the actual right number percents out of 100. So I typically would type in like 0 0.06 and then Excel will do the conversion automatically, or you can type in the number six and then make sure you change the home view there of that number to be percentage, okay? So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully that clarifies some discrepancies between putting interest rates in a calculator versus Excel. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, et cetera, and I'll see y'all in the next one.